President Obama continues his Middle East trip today, but without, apparently, the use of one of his special presidential limousines. It broke down yesterday. For a while, some people thought it was because the wrong kind of fuel had been put into the tank. Apparently, that's not the case. But honestly, we don't know much about what happened. However, we are joined now through Skype by someone who has actually helped build a presidential limo. Jim Hicks is in Salt Lake City today. He helped build uh, Bill Clinton's limo back in 1992 when you were uh, working with GM. Good to see you, Jim. No, it's nice to be with you. So ex we understand there's thick glass and it's, it's specially designed, but how similar are these special limos to a, n a normal car? Uh, well, they, they look similar to uh, what, what you would associate with a limousine, of course, um, but that's just about where the similarities would end. My understanding is, is that they have their own oxygen supply, that they are uh, resistant to chemical attack, they're, uh, they're basically waterproof, they're airtight, of course. And that's really all that you ever really knew about it. You, you were never given uh, information on what the compounds were, the alloys, if you will, um, that that material was made out of. And it's classified. You just don't, you just don't get that information. And what's the setup? Where do you even build a car like this to keep it secure? We used to call ourselves the best kept secret in, in General Motors. And um, the building itself uh, came out of what we used to call the car wars. And uh, that was during a time when um, even within General Motors, each division would compete against the other divisions. Uh, and, and, and that competition was, was quite fierce. The competition with, within GM. So the GM had set up a, a room so secure, secure enough to build the president's limo, so that the different divisions of GM didn't know what the other divisions were doing. That, that's, that's correct. I, I read in the, in the old press release from when the car uh, came out that you guys spent almost a year manufacturing it and I wonder how what, what a car that takes a year to make is basically a one-off is is handcrafted what what the the pros of a car like that are and if there's any concern we see saw this one maybe break down that because there aren't a million of them made it's hard to test you know how well it works you're going to have failures in anything that you manufacture the difference is with this particular build with these presidential limousines there's so much testing that's done on every component before it ever comes to, to final assembly, that usually this stuff is, it, it's almost, uh, uh, I don't want to say idiot proof, but it's, it's just about indestructible. This stuff just does not, as a general rule, break down. Yeah, what did you make of this report that the limousine had broken down yesterday? Um, well, I mean, I certainly understand anything breaking down. Uh, and in fact, one of the reasons we got that limo is because they had experienced such problems with uh, the previous limo uh, that, the, that Bush had that they were, it was kind of on the QT, but, but what I had heard uh, in the rumblings was that they were never going to go back to that manufacturer uh, because they just, uh, even the brakes were deficient. Ah, yeah. Bush had bad brakes. <laughs> See, the press got it wrong all 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 this time. It was uh, it was bad brakes for the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting stuff, Jim Hicks, and we should say father of post colleague Josh Hicks. Uh, th thanks for joining us and, and letting us in on this kind of fascinating part of uh, the presidency. Oh well, thank you very much.